Welcome back to Old School Sports and our playthrough of Tennis Manager 2021. We are at the start of the 2022 season, our second season at the helm of the Old School Sports Tennis Academy. You can see we still have quite primitive capabilities, although we are in progress on constructing a youth and scouting center. But in the Global Tennis Academy uh, area, we still have a lot of work to do. We do have a second player signed to our team this season. Uh, Maxime Cressy, who's ranked 75th in the world right now, was with us last year. And we've now added Stefan Kozlov, 367th in the world. So a bit younger player with uh, good potential that we're going to look to be building up this season as we continue to hopefully climb in the rankings with Maxime and uh, move on to uh, do bigger and better things in the world of tennis. Well, we're at the second week of the season, first tournament of the year for Maxime Cressy, and you can see that he was the number one seed here at the 80-level Da Nang Open in Vietnam. Uh, he has got Yasutaka Uchiyama in the final, so we are going to go ahead and uh, play that match. Uh, Stefan Kozlov has been uh, back at our training center training for the last couple weeks, hasn't played yet this season. Uh, this is the first uh, tournament of the season for either, either player. Uh, Maxime is getting to the point in the rankings where an uh, 80-level tournament is, is not going to do a ton for him, but given that uh, he had really great results at the 80-level last season, getting a uh, win in an 80-level tournament into the books for the ranking for the next year would, would certainly be a positive thing for him. Uh, suggesting we go with a high return intensity to try to break Uchiyama. Maxime is troubled. Come on, this is for you. It's an important step in your career, even though you've won at this level several times already. We are going to see how this goes. Hopefully we can get the W. We just got an early break, but he broke us back. Or actually, we didn't get an early break. I'm confused. But we still are both on serve as we get near the end of the first set into the tiebreaker. Oof. And we lost the tiebreaker 7-5 to Uchiyama, so that's not optimal. Uh, we're going to ramp up our intensity level on both key points and the serve for the second set here. Stop giving him free points, Maxime. You're better than he is. And now we are down an early break. Uh, this could be a disappointing result. And it is. We were a 6-7-4-6 loser in the final. Uh, we'll get 45 points for having made it to the final. But, um, you know, that's that's uh, still marginally helpful to us at this point. But really, with these 80-level tournaments, um, want to be winning. Getting here to the final is um, the least we need to do. And at this point, um, you know, just getting to the semifinal in this level of a tournament isn't really going to do too much for us in terms of helping us improve our ranking going forward. So one tournament in the early hardcourt season down, and uh, we'll see where the rest of the season takes us. And after losing in the finals in Da Nang, we are now at the Australian Open, where you can see Maxime has a very difficult draw. Got the 11th ranked player in the world, Pablo Carino Busta, in the first round. Uh, one of our goals this season is to get to the round of 32 in a Grand Slam with Maxime. Uh, obviously not going to be easy to do it there, facing the 30-year-old Busta, who is uh, one of the top players in the world. We are going to uh, approach this as intensely as possible. Uh, we are definitely going to be the underdogs. Maxime is determined, though. Love to see that. Play some beautiful tennis, Maxime. It will lead you to victory. And so far, we're on serve here in the first set. Heading into the late stage of the set, still looking for a break. And uh, Busta got the break from us, unfortunately. So we are down a set. Um, not too much negative to, to talk about. We're, we're playing really good tennis. Uh, we just happen to be up against an uh, incredibly talented player. 
Make sure to win those decisive points, Maxime. I don't have much to tell you. You're up against the 11th ranked player in the world, and he's up an early break on us. Uh, the set is getting away from us quickly. So now we are down 2-0 here at the Australian Open. Going to have to win uh, three sets in a row to get there. Still got to focus on those decisive points, Maxime. And we're down another early break. Looks like our Australian Open uh, 2022 is uh, pretty quick. Last year we were ranked lower. We had to try to qualify and we didn't qualify. So I guess it's a small amount of progress that we're actually in the main draw. And we'll get to uh, cash a nice uh, Grand Slam check for even though we lost in the first round. But hopefully uh, in the, the coming majors, in the coming months of this season, we'll be able to do better than we did here today. Well, Maxime has been the number one seed in another 80-level event, and he has made it to the finals of the Launceston Open in Australia against Zhizhen Zhang. Uh, let's hope that we can have a better result than we did in this level event in uh, Da Nang uh, a few weeks ago. As I mentioned, uh, making it to the finals at this level event is kind of the minimum that we need to do, but obviously it would be nice to get a W at the 80 level into the books, and we did just go up an early break. Um, would be nice if we can uh, win this one in straight sets and make it easy and painless. So that first break helped us out. Uh, our win percentage on our second serve is too low. We'll have to take more risk. All right, well, we'll bump up our intensity on our serve, and we'll bump up our intensity on key points. Stay with the same level of intensity, Maxime. And hopefully we can get out of here with a W. On serve here in the early stages. Oh, we were just broke. We broke back, though, so we could be headed for a tiebreaker. Oh, and then he broke us back after we broke back. So uh, heading into a third set, must raise his level on key moments. We're as intense as we can be, but we'll raise our intensity on the serve. He's stressed out. Keep up the pressure, Maxime. Both on serve here in the early stages of the final set. We got a break, and we are the champions at the Launceston Open. So a big uh, big victory for Maxime to um, get that win at an 80-level event. Wow, what a confrontation. This, mask was this match was Dante-esque. Okay. So a win for Maxime. So that's positive as we head into the middle stages of the uh, early season outdoor hardcore tournament schedule, primarily in uh, the southern parts of the northern hemisphere and uh, a lot of events obviously in the southern hemisphere when it's summer there. Well, you can see that... Uh, well, you can't see anymore, but uh, Maxime has lost in the round of 16 at uh, 250 level events for two straight weeks. Uh, first in New York at the Uniondale Open and now just at the Delray Beach Open. And then a disappointing performance for Stefan Kozlov. Uh, made it to the quarterfinals at the Ektobi 2 tournament. But that's only a level 20 event, so we were kind of hoping um, that Stefan would be a little more successful at that level tournament. But uh, continue to make some progress. Uh, mostly Stefan has spent his time training so far in the early stages of this season. He did get uh, bounced in the first round of one 80-level event that he played, and then he did win a round at the next 80-level event that he played. So little baby steps forward with him in his career, and uh, Maxime hoping for more than a, a round of 16 appearance in the, the 250-level event, but uh, at least he won a match in each of them. Big match coming up for Maxime here at the 125 level Indian Wells Masters. Uh, we are into the quarterfinals. We were the third seed. Uh, we're going to, be, going to be going against the fifth seed, Alexei Paparin. 
Uh, this is the first time that Maxime's made it to the quarterfinal at this level of a tournament, even though we, we were the third seed and uh, should have made it this far. So a uh, big match for us. Um, we'll get the best points that we've ever gotten from this level um, by virtue of already having made it to the quarterfinals. But the hope is certainly to uh, make it further than that and uh, keep this good run that we're involved in going. Oh, it looked like we had a chance at an early break, and we just missed, and now he's broken us. We've broken back. Whew, wild first set. I know it goes by fast at this fast level, but I don't want to bore everybody with all the dirty details. Um, have to take more risks in our second serve, but we're already at full intensity, so hopefully we can uh, keep things going and get through this uh, second set. And we got an early break. That's really good. We can just hold. It's ours, and it is. So we are into the semifinals at this 125 level event. Uh, great news. Congrats, Maxime. Let's go on to the next round where we're aiming for another win. And uh, we are going to have... Uh, looked like Carlos somebody we were going to be facing. Carlos Tabernare. Uh, 15th ranked player in the world, so we will be favorites in this match and then uh, hopefully can get on to the semifinals. Uh, while we've been playing at this uh, tournament, uh, Stefan Kozlov has been at a 20 level event. He uh, had won the last match. I assume there's another match that he's playing around uh, this time. So hopefully we'll see the results for uh, Stefan at that level also. It would be great if we could have a couple of players in tournament finals in the same week. We just got an early break in the first set. If we can, oh, and he broke us back. On serve here towards the end of the first set. We're into the tiebreaker. Hopefully, hopefully in the tiebreaker, our big serve will serve us well, and it did in this case. Uh, but seven six, uh, tough first set. Um, keep up the pressure, Maxime. Second set, again, we're on serve. Uh, just got broke. Ooh, got wiped out in that second set, 6-2. That happened quickly. Got to do better on returns. We're already full intensity on returns. Strike the right balance between control and risk-taking. I mean, there's not a lot of things that we did bad that second set, but wasting too many easy points. Let's not let it get away from us. Oh, uh, we just got a break here in the third. And then we let him break back immediately. Ugh, come on. But it worked out. 6-4 win. So we are on to the finals at a 125 level tournament, which is a really big step forward for us. Potentially a real thriller, Maxime. I would have paid to watch this match. Ooh, and it looks like Stefan did just lose in the semifinals of the Trento tournament. So uh, better performance than his 20-level event earlier uh, in this season, but uh, obviously would have hoped to do better. But we are Maxime at this point, and we are focused on getting to the final, and we're going to be facing Jensen Brooksby. So uh, it'll be a very difficult match for, uh, for Maxime. Um, obviously would be great to... Um, win and we are going to be a uh, probably marginal favorite given that we are higher seeded but you can see that we did lose to him the one time that we played him before so uh not a good experience the last time we fade played him um aggressive baseliner hopefully uh we'll be knocking our serve in there hard and accurately and um Ooh, I actually did something positive with Maxime. He was stressed out. I said, relax, it's a positive pressure, and now he's reassured. I very rarely ever say anything that seems to help his mood before the matches, so hopefully that's a good omen as we head into the final of this 125-level event. And we are already down a break, two early breaks. Ooh. Rough set, 6-2, as I mentioned. We are 0-1 uh, in our career against Brooksby. Just a really bad set for us all in all. Let's see. Uh, wasting too many easy points. Be a little more aggressive there, Maxime. Hopefully we can turn this around. 
and we've been broken again early in this uh, second set and that will do it so it's going to be good for us points wise to have made it to the final of a 125 level event certainly going to help our ranking but when uh we got that far and we were the favorite uh it's definitely disappointing to to lose the match even though it was against a, a very talented player so uh we will continue on with the season but with the uh, finals appearance for maxime at the 125 level event and then the semi-final appearance for uh, Stefan Kozlov in the 20-level event. A uh, good week for our players. And after playing at the 125-level event in Indian Wells uh, last week, we are now in the Indian Wells Masters. And you can say, uh, I guess technically we're the underdog, but uh, couldn't hope for a more even match than uh, what we have ahead of us with Albert Ramos Vinolas. Uh, Alex de Minear will be waiting for us in the next round, the 20th seed, if we're able to get by it. Would be great to uh, get a victory at uh, a tournament as prestigious as the Indian Wells Masters. Uh, you can see the 34-year-old is ranked 59th in the world. His ranking has been falling recently. Uh, still going to be a tough match for us, but hopefully us being uh, younger, perhaps in better shape at this point, will... Uh, help uh, Maxime will himself to the victory in this 1,000 level Masters event. Ooh, we just got a break. That was big. Took the first set 6-3. See our intensity is as high as it can be. Don't enable him to get his head above water, Maxime. We just got an early break in the second set. Need to just hold serve to get out of this. And we have 6-3, six, 6-4. Six, so a win in a Masters level tournament. Uh, another nice achievement for Maxime. Congratulations, but we've got another round. Let's not bask in the glow for too long. And uh, Stefan Kozlov uh, got bounced in the round of 16, but this was an 80-level event at the Zhuhai tournament this week, so that will actually be uh, be helpful for him in terms of uh, potentially his ranking, uh, given that he's going to be spending the rest of the week at home. We'll have him continue to work on his uh, serve power, uh, give him one extra serve power session um, to make sure that he stays... Uh, medium medium busy while uh, Maxime continues to play at the Masters at Indian Wells. And it looks like we will have Alex de Menor, um, so going to be facing a much higher seeded player in the tournament uh, in this round. You can see he's uh, ranked 20th in the world, uh, so we will definitely be the underdogs in this match have not faced him before. He's uh, 23 years old, similar age to us. Need to have a high return intensity to break him, which we do have. Key match in your life. Don't miss it, Maxime. Maybe we're putting too much pressure on him, but obviously a uh, victory against a uh, higher rated player to uh, get to the round of 32 in a Masters level event would be huge. But we've been broken early in the first set. Ended up uh, costing us as we lost that set 6-4. You can see there's not a lot in the red here. There's nothing in the red here. We're, we're kind of playing as well as we can. We just happen to be up against a uh, better, better ranked player. So we got to win the decisive points to win a player that, that's, that's this good. And we are again down an early break. Uh, not, not optimal. Going to have to break back at some point. And it did not happen. So we're only broken twice. But uh, if you're only broken once in one set and once in another set uh, and you don't break them, you're going to lose. And we were 6-4, uh, 6-4 six, four, six, four losers here in the round of 64 at the Indian Wells Masters. We need to draw the necessary conclusions and use them to bounce back. But a good good week for us financially to get a win in the Masters Open. Uh, another 13000 for close to 14000 for the Academy. 
Uh, our balance is 87,000. So uh, we are we are muddling through in terms of our financial position at this point. Um, obviously, the key will be more Masters level events uh, with a good performance from Maxime, and then hopefully winning a few matches in the Grand Slams later in the season to keep our uh, finances in order. We are on to week 12 of the uh, season. Uh, you can see last week Stefan Kozlov was a semifinalist at a 20-level event in Bakersfield. He's training at the Academy this week. Maxime is at the Miami Masters, where he uh, won his uh, first-round match and now has a difficult matchup ahead of him against Alexander Bublik, uh, 32nd seed, 35th-ranked player in the world. Certainly the favorite against us, but uh, hopefully uh, this would be a uh, big win for Maxime if we are able to get past him. Um, it's an important match. As I mentioned before, uh, when we were at uh, the previous Masters level event, uh, you know, it's 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 good for us just to win a tournament at these events uh, or win a round at these events. Obviously, winning a tournament at these events would be incredible, but. Uh, even winning a round um, is good for us, but uh, up against the top players in the world, anytime we play at one of these events and we got kind of overwhelmed in that first set, 6-2. He's pumped, but we'll be a little harsh on him. Show some pride. Don't let him walk all over you. But uh, we are certainly up against it facing a much higher rated player, and we're down another break early, down a second break. That was ugly. Two and two losers to Alexander Bublik. So we are out. He was stronger than you. Hierarchy was respected. Uh, decent paycheck again for us. Uh, so it's good that we're able to go in those Masters 1000 level events. But uh, we are nearing the end of the uh, first indoor or the first uh, hard court season here. So. Uh, We'll see what's on store for us in the uh, last week, week or so of the season before we move on to clay court season with the goal being a uh, performance in the French Open for Maxime. And you can see that Maxime is actually uh, going to be training at home this week, so uh, we will uh, set him up for his training in this final week of the season. Looking at Maxime skills. Uh, I think he does have a tournament coming up next week, um, so don't want to push him too hard. We'll keep the medium workload, which means we can only uh, probably add one additional training into him. Um, backhand accuracy still, you know, one of the weaker areas in his game since we've been focusing so much on serve accuracy over the last year plus. So we will. Uh, work on the technical aspect of his placed backhand to hopefully keep his uh, backhand moving in the right direction. And you can see Stefan Kozlov is following a similar plan to what we did with um, Maxime last year. He's playing the 20 level clay event, the Santa Margarita de Paula Open. Uh, our hope is that he'll get a little practice on the clay courts there since uh, we do not have clay courts at our rather primitive tennis academy right now. So we need to practice on them uh, by any means possible. And we'll see how uh, Kozlov does. And he got bounced in the round of 16. So, uh, so that was definitely disappointing. Um, but... Uh, you can see we have gotten his serve power up a notch to a uh, 9 from an 8, but um, his physical skills are, are kind of fine. His mental skills are really solid. We just have been focusing on trying to improve um, Kozlov's technical skills, so we are going to continue to focus on developing a, a bigger serve for him. So we're going to work on a powerful serve and serve with spin in the coming days now that he's been uh, knocked out of the tournament. And he's back at the academy training with Maxime. So the month is ending. Uh, we can see our uh, academy objectives as we get to the end of March. Uh, haven't had anyone depart yet. We've still got over $100,000. Need to have that zero balance. 
reach level two for the youth and scouting center we're just a month or two away from that now so that's good and uh, unfortunately when we brought on Kozlov um, they hadn't told us that we couldn't recruit secondary players when we brought him on and then between the time that we made an offer to him and he accepted he joined us so although uh, that's not great for us in terms of board trust uh, there's nothing we can do about that as the uh, first hardcourt season of the 2022 year winds down uh, we'll see where uh, Maxime and Kozlov uh, rank as we finish the first uh, the first quarter of the season already nope I am not going to do your interview sorry and uh, we'll see the training report for Maxime uh, progressed very well which was great Kozlov also progressed well serve accuracy serve power both moving in the right direction Maxime for the end of the first hardcourt season we moved up 10 rankings in the world to 65th uh, he earned over three hundred thousand dollars and you can see we were very active we played eight tournaments and we had a 24 and 7 record we did win that 80 level event and a 70 uh, percent winning percentage looking at our goals for the season um, we are in the top 70 which is great we're in the top seven in the u.s we've reached the round of 16 at a 500 and 250 level event but uh the Grand Slam and the Masters tournaments will be critical for us. Our goal is to get to a round of 32 event in uh, both of those in the uh, coming months. Looking at how the first hardcourt season went for Stefan Kozlov, he did move up 46 spots in the rankings. Uh, we were pretty strategic with, with how we played. Um, won only $9,000, obviously playing in much lower level events than Maxime is. Uh, his record was 12 and 7 uh, did not win a tournament but did win 63 percent of his matches looking at uh, the goals we have with stefan as we close in on this part of the season we have achieved the goal of getting into the top 36 nationally uh, we need to get into the top 300 as you notice we moved up over 40 spots into the low 320s so feel pretty comfortable that we will be able to rank uh, pick up those last 21 points we need in the rankings over the last nine months of the season uh, would like to qualify for a grand slam event and get to a final in an 80 level event so those will remain uh, focuses of ours in the uh, coming months so that is a wrap for the first uh, hardcourt season. Clay season is coming up next. That will be our next episode. Uh, Maxime will certainly be going to the French Open. Uh, Stefan almost certainly will not be going to the French Open. Uh, when we did do our uh, registrations, we didn't even bother um, signing up Stefan for the, the qualifying. I think he is still uh, a little lowly ranked to uh, perhaps even get into the qualifying. Um, but hope is that um, possibly with Wimbledon and then certainly with the U.S. Open we will be able to get Stefan into a qualifying for a Grand Slam later in this season and he will be playing a fair amount of uh, 80 level events in the upcoming clay court season to hopefully uh, you know get to the finals of one of those and achieve another one of his goals with us thank you so much for watching if you're enjoying things would love it if you've subscribed appreciate any comments down below have a great day